So I hope you're sitting down for this one because this is probably the most stupid um, faux intellectual article I've ever read in my life and um, this guy Alistair Heath might be one of the biggest frauds I have ever seen um, around for a while. You know this is like big big um, kind of pretend big pretend intellectualism. Um, Daniel Hannan levels of uh, faux intellectualism I'd say. This guy Alistair Heath writing in the uh, Tory graph. Um, this this article. I hope you're sitting down for this one, and I hope you've got some tea ready because this this is painful, guys. Uh, again, you know, I don't understand what the end game of these people are, um, but we're going to go into the article. So it says, why don't the European elites ever learn the lessons from history? I mean, what lessons do you want them to learn? It should be obvious that the Northern Ireland Protocol was signed under duress by the UK and cannot last in its present state. So. When they talk about duress, they talk about the fact that, you know, Boris Johnson was stuck because of the, um, I think it was like the Ben Act, which meant that no deal couldn't happen. And therefore he had to go to Brussels to get the oven ready deal so that he could run a general election campaign and win and then vote through this said oven ready deal. Like he, he you know, he ran a general election campaign on it. He had an 80 seat majority. So this deal was not signed under duress. It absolutely wasn't like this man's an absolute fraud. He just says the only question is, um, you know, what replaces it? Um, and blah 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 you know it needs to save the good friday agreement which the uk is the one putting that under jeopardy really by suspending the northern Ireland protocol so once again this guy has no idea what he's talking about the idea that the eu will be able to keep the protocol alive by threatening britain with a trade war merely confirms the scale of brussels delusion i think absolutely they can if there's a threat of a trade war not to mention the fact that america is a guarantor of the good friday agreement and it looks like the americans specifically joe biden will probably side with ireland and the eu on this one because it's the uk that are the ones causing the problems here but this guy doesn't understand that he also takes a massive dig at the americans at the end of this article which is hilarious saying that the protocol is a classic case of an unequal treaty bruv you guys said we hold all the cards this will be the easiest deal in history all of these things right and now you're saying it's a case of unequal treaty so are you saying that it's like you know the two powers are uneven like we are superior to the eu is that the take it's not but you know that's the way they made it out in 2016 right so unequal treaty of the kind that um, uh, China's Xiang, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, dynasty was forced to sign uh, with all that, with all the imperial powers. So, you know, he's kind of citing an example which the average reader is going to have no idea about to seem like he's an intellectual. Oh, you know, he knows about the, uh, the uh, Chinese dynasty and things like that. You know, the result was a bitterness at a century of humiliation that continues to poison international relations to this day, which is to an extent true that, you know, China still talk about the century of humiliation and they teach it to kids and, you know, they don't want this to happen again. They want China to be a real superpower and a sense of resentment which helped usher in China's deplorable communist nationalist regime. OK, so you've cited this article saying that, you know, this is a classic case of unequal treaty. You cited a very extreme example. And then he goes on to say the consequences won't be as bad or as long lasting in the case of the protocol, but they can extremely end up being they can end up being extremely unpleasant. So you've cited this really, really uh, big example of, you know, this, you know, the of this um, agreement that was signed that, you know, led to a century of humiliation, etc. All of this stuff. Right. And then you're like, oh, but th this won't be as bad as that. Well, this kind of debunks your argument, doesn't it? Kind of like, oh, yeah, this, you know, it could be really bad. But not as bad as this like no bro like if you're gonna do this yeah you cite an example that's lesser than this and then you say that what's going on with the northern Ireland protocol is worse than this example not less than less bad than the example is given if that makes any sense um i hope that made sense so brussels is asking for too much when it threatens sausage wars again we've debunked this you know this was um agreed by the uk back in 2019 and the grace period is just ending so that's it. It's just the rule being implemented. If anything, the EU did us a massive favour by adding a grace period. So debunked. No sovereign, no self-respecting sovereign state can accept this. The thing is, we've already accepted this. So I guess we are not a self-respecting sovereign state, right? Because we've already agreed to this. So I guess he's taking a dig at the UK there. That's embarrassing. I thought this man's a patriot. After years of listening to such nonsense, nonsense still believe the ridiculous excuse that unsafe British chilled products might leak into the supposed, supposedly sacrosanct, uh, sacrosanct European single market. I mean, that's the point, yes, is to stop that happening, especially when we sign uh, deals with countries that have lower standards than us, like Canada, Canada America, Brazil, Australia, etc. That's the whole point of this, you massive fool. 
Um, he goes on to say, what if they do? I mean, the whole point is, is to stop any kind of bad, you know, food outbreak regards to illness and other things. And it's in order to keep the high standards. That's why you have a single market. You know, are you going to do a deal with America, which says that, you know, we're not going to allow hormone beef into this country, but, you know, we're not going to have any checks in place to stop that stuff happening. Are you in favor of that? Or American medicines, which can be unsafe, given that multiple uh, pharmaceutical companies get fined or sued by claimants because they develop things like cancer. Are you going to be okay with those sorts of drugs and pesticides getting into this country? Because so what if they do? Right? Th this guy. Um, he says, our um, sanitary regulations remain the same. And even if, uh, well, that's not 100% true because we have changed the rules on pesticides, or at least we're going to. And even if that was true, when we decide to cho when we choose to change them, it still wouldn't matter or could be dealt with in other more sensible ways. So if we decide to start doing hormone beef in this country, you know, the EU should have to accept that despite the fact that they have higher rules than us. Like... <sighs> This guy, again, you know, are you going to accept meat? Are you going to eat uh, meat and take medicines that are of lower standards than British ones? Are you going to do that, pal? Because I don't think you are. Are you going to drink water from uh, Flint, Michigan? Because who cares, right, that people have developed illnesses from um, drinking this water? Are you going to drink it, pal, every day? Love to see it. It's time to call the EU's bluff. Its obsession with cyto, um sanitary rules is merely an excuse to detach Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK. No, it's to make sure there are no, you know, bad, you know, bad illnesses that come out of, um, you know, meats and things like that. You know, America has far more salmonella outbreaks than the UK does. You know, even when you talk about um, as a percentage of population, it's way worse because they have way lower standards than us. Like, come on, dude, be real. He's trying to be all intellectual and stuff, but, you know, this man's trying to dunk on the EU, but he can't reach the rim. That's what's happened here. The EU should have enough self-awareness to understand that the deal it was obt it obtained was too good to be true. So you're telling me we conned the EU. We, a nation state, conned an international institution into accepting a deal that was, which was too good to be true, right? So is that what Boris Johnson said during the 2019 election? Vote for me, we're going to implement the oven-ready deal, which is too good to be true. No, you massive idiot. And that way, the only pro the only way the protocol can survive is if it, if it chooses... So if the EU chooses to exercise maximum flexibility, flexibility on what, you know, where, what, what do you want them to do that's different here? The UK had no real choice but to sign it. No, no, we had a choice. We could have stayed in the single market and the customs union, but we, we chose not to, pal. So, you know, saying that the UK had no choice to sign it, but to sign it, it's just dumb. Not to mention the fact that, you know, as Brexit is that saying we had nothing to fear from no deal. So, you know, the UK didn't actually have to sign this because we could have gone off the cliff. We could have done a no deal. Um, that was in, you know, we could have done this in 2019 before Boris Johnson signed the quote oven ready deal. Why did we do that then, buddy? He says it could either, um, the UK could either agree to a treaty that essentially handed away parts of Britain's sovereignty over Northern Ireland or accept no deal Brexit, which would have created uncertainty, economic damage while still not resolving the Irish situation. Ha, huh, that's interesting. So you're saying that Brexit led us into a situation where we had to either give away parts um, of the union um, to the EU or we would have had to have a no deal which would have caused way more problems. So you're saying the reality of Brexit was it boiled down to two things. One, a very bad situation and two, an even worse situation. I don't remember you guys saying this in 2016 when the referendum was around. Does anyone actually remember hearing about that? Because I don't. The EU wasn't, um, he says, you know, the EU wasn't acting rationally. It was set on kamikaze mode, committed to punishing Britain at any cost. If they were in that mode, then um, they wouldn't have put any grace periods in the Northern Ireland Protocol. They would have just done it from the jump that these this is the new normal. Goodbye. But they didn't. They gave us grace periods. It's, you know, the UK's customs agents and customs officers that, you know, do the checks within the IRC. It's not the EU ones. So once again, this man is just blatantly lying here. And the fact that it's only 20% of consignments that are checked. If the EU want to be more aggressive, they would do 30%, just like goods go from France, uh, from GB to France. So uh, again, th this guy is just, you know, how, how do you, a newspaper, publish an article full of lies? It's so annoying. Frost and his team... Um, you know, Frost and his team had to calculate correctly that signing up to the protocol was the least uh, was their least bad option. So you're telling me again that Brexit boiled down to a situation where we had to sign this horrible deal that was too good to be true, that gave away um, sovereignty over Northern Ireland, blah blah blah. Um, that was the least bad option. Like that's what Brexit boiled down to. Like that's that's embarrassing, isn't it? It is nonsense to claim that they had read the document. They hadn't read the documents properly or misunderstood them. So why are they saying that then? Why are they saying that? They knew that the protocol would only ever be acceptable if the EU uh, tried hard to make it work. You know, surely if, if that's the case, they should have negotiated certain things that would have allowed the protocol to work then. Why didn't they do that? 
once again, he's putting the blame on the EU, which isn't the case. The blame majority goes for the UK because we're the ones that helped negotiate and agreed to this deal. So surely we're the ones to blame here. Frost had to hope for the best, even though uh, in the end he got the worst. So are you telling me that you know Frost, a man who got his, um, it was allowed into the House of Lords because of his work around the um, the Northern Ireland Protocol and the Oven Ready Deal, should not have been rewarded with a peerage because he got the worst out of this situation here. So you're telling me that, you know, when you told people in 2019 Brexiteers to vote for the Conservative parties and vote for this deal, you were lying because there is a screenshot of it. We'll try and bring it up if I've got it. Uh, far more than just ordinary treaties, the protocol um, is full of get out of clauses, not at least Article 16. And he talks about all of this serious economic societal and all that stuff, which is, um, OK, great. Do it then. Do it. If, if you genuinely believe this is the way, do it. Um, it also contains a democratic lock with the first consent vote due in 2024. Both sides knew all along the protocol may not work. I mean, truth, that's why things like Article 16 and this consent mechanism exists. That's why, because both sides um, weren't 100% sure about the Northern Ireland Protocol working. The only thing that the EU knew is they were going to do their best to make sure the no Northern Ireland Protocol worked. And the only thing the UK knew is they would do the best to undermine the Northern Ireland Protocol. Contrary to what Remainers claim, there was there was another way. Okay, let's let's hear this. Let's hear this. The EU um, and Britain's political elite could have accepted Brexit, negotiated a sensible settlement, including one that dealt with the real issue relating to Northern Ireland in a grown-up, technological savvy fashion. All right, dude, can you point to me a country that uses just technology to deal with um, the border? Can you point to one? I'll wait because you can't. You can't point to any any country that isn't in a, a single market and customs union that just deals with technology. Can, can you do it, buddy? Because you haven't offered a single example in this article about that. That doesn't surprise me at all in the least. Um, it says here it would have required concessions from the UK, even though we hold all the cards, but not as many. So, again, you know, he's talked a load of nonsense here, but that's not a surprise. Um, Theresa May displays staggering weakness. Um, and saying that the EU's negotiators went with a power grab because Theresa May was so weak. But the thing is, this agreement wasn't signed under Theresa May. It was signed by Boris Johnson. And, you know, he's trying to blame Theresa May, saying, that, oh, they weakened, she weakened the uh, the UK so much that, you know, Boris Johnson had to sign the oven ready deal. So stupid. May's negotiating team saw themselves as supplicants and boxed her successor into a corner. Um, I mean, that's not true either, was it? Because Boris Johnson still had the option of a no deal. He just decided not to take it. The Remainer rearguard action when Johnson became uh, Prime Minister and the accompanying uh, constitutional crisis emboldened the EU so much that it started to believe its own propaganda. You know, this is projection on his part because it's the Brexiteers that believe their own propaganda. My man talking about technological solutions but doesn't offer a single country that uses technological solutions. Okay, buddy. One can never, one can be too clever. I mean, I think you're talking about self, yourself and Boris Johnson there. It is possible to force a party suffering from a momentary weakness to sign a contract so one-sided that it is eventually deemed unenforceable. Okay. So you're saying here that, you know, one party, the UK, was suffering so much that we signed a contract that we were forced to sign. So why is it in 2019 no one was talking about this? Boris Johnson said it's a great deal, you know, gives Northern Ireland the best of both worlds. So, you know, in 2019, were you the one rallying against the Northern Ireland Protocol? Because I don't think you were. Legislation such as the Unfair Contract Terms Act 1977 reinforces this point. So you're going to go to the British courts and try and argue this point, are you? Are you going to get, are you going to sue the EU over this? Because here you're making the legal point. Let's see you do it then. Let's see you man do it. Those who say that Britain, having signed the protocol, must now stick with it, therefore, are wrong. So, if, if that's the case, that those telling the UK to stick with this protocol are wrong, go, go to the courts, sue the EU and sue the British government or whoever you have to, and use this clause to get us out of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Do it. We are within our rights to seek to renegotiate it entirely and entitled to invoke Article 16. If we were entitled to invoke Article 16, we would have done that now. But we're not, because we can't. So And we can't renegotiate it, because it's an international binding treaty. Um, unjust law isn't real law. Me, the only thing that's unjust here is me having to read this crappy article full of propaganda by you, mate. Because, um, again, he's just talking legal nonsense. Again, he's trying to be really clever and act like he's an intellectual when this man clearly is not. You know, he's come up with a nonsensical argument talking about um, Unfair Contract Terms Act 1977. If it's the case, then, you know, hire, hire a legal team, take the EU and the UK to court saying that the UK can renegotiate this agreement because we was, it was signed under duress or some nonsense and see how far you get see how badly you get laughed out of courts the courts see how badly the high court judges laugh at you and tell you to get out see how quick that is
this guy. The EU's appalling behaviour and its attempt to, attempt to drag in President Biden remind us that there are two kinds of political entities. So the EU are rightfully so bringing in, uh, dragging in President Joe Biden, considering that the um, the American president is supposedly meant to be the leader of the free world, and they acted as mediators to help get the Good Friday Agreement. Let's not forget that it was Bill Clinton and a special envoy that helped us get that. So this argument here of, oh, look at them dragging in the Americans. Like, the Americans get dragged in all the time, especially because of our nonsense. Let's not forget Suez. Um, those of the more mature democratic variety can coexist with neighbour states, working with them to resolve local, geographical and relevant issues. So I'm thinking he's talking about the EU here. Then there are those status-obsessed imperialistic bullies who seek to control and direct their nearby, their near abroad Russia, um, their near abroad Russia style, who are obsessed with their sphere of influence and showing the rest of the world they are a regional superpower. This is this is so great, right? Because obviously in the first bit he's talking about the e, uh, the UK here, talking about oh, you know, resolve issues, you know, talk and you know, mature democratic and all that stuff. When realistically it's flipped. This this is the UK down here, you know, uh, imperialistic bullies, you know. Ireland was part of the British colonies, you know, um, prior to the, um, I can't remember which act it is, I think it was in 1922 when they had the kind of separation where you had the, um, the kind of country, the, I know people get, might get annoyed when I refer to it as that, the Republic of Ireland, or as people want it to be referred to as Ireland, and you had Northern Ireland formed, I can't remember the exact name of it. But, you know, that's the example of the regional bully. He was still trying to bully Ireland right now because if the Northern Ireland Protocol goes, then the is, is, I, I don't know how possible it is, but where will checks be done? Because they can't be done within Ireland, the island of Ireland. That this, if, if you suspend the Northern Ireland Protocol, it, in theory, would take, would be forcing Ireland out of the single market and customs union and force checks on Ireland. The EU have denied this, but again, if the UK suspend the Northern Ireland Protocol, what happens then? That's the key question. And that's the situation where the UK are bullying the EU and Ireland into this situation here. So this is absolute projection, trying to act like the UK is the ones being trying to be the negotiators and, you know, the decent regional powers, when we've never been that. We've always been an imperial power that seeks to bully people. Be real, man. The EU pathetically for an entity that is waning economically, culturally, demographically and militarily. Um, the EU doesn't have a military buddy. Like, what are you talking about? And our military, I think, it's weaker than the French in certain regards. So, w again, what are you talking about? Belongs to the latter category. No, the UK belongs to the latter category. Its weapon of choice typically is its bureaucracy. Oh, man, I've never seen a war won on bureaucracy. You know, oh, uh, you know, um, you know, Saddam Hussein surrendered. Or, you know, the, the Iraq war was ended because the Americans forced Saddam to sign a load of papers and stuff like that. You know, that's how the war was won. Not through tanks and weapons and military force and domination, death, essentially murder. That's not how wars are won. It's through bureaucracy. Honestly. It wants to force others to follow its rules. It can. I mean, we're trying to force other countries to follow our rules when it comes to trade deals, right? We're trying to say to Australia, we're not going to import hormone beef from your country. We're trying to force them to adhere to our rules on exports, just like the EU has when it comes to goods being exported to the EU, just like America does when goods are exported to America. Like, what are you talking about? It can only be friends with those it controls in this way. I mean, that's not true at all. That's not true. The EU has tons of trade deals with other countries. It's not forcing those countries to adhere to any kind of special rules. It's just when you export to the EU, you adhere to the EU's rules. No hormone beef, all that stuff. So more projection from this, this absolute fraud. An organisation set up to ensure peace in Europe is now busy undermining harmony in Northern Ireland. I mean, that's not true. It's the UK that are doing that. And free trade more widely. I mean... Not really. I mean, the EU is a block that's designed for free trade. That's why it exists, the free movement of goods, services, capital and labour. I mean, the UK aren't for that. That's why we left, right? And we're signing trade deals with countries that still have things like checks, um, you know, and customs declarations. Our deal with Australia will still have checks and customs declarations, whilst French trade with Germany doesn't have um, SPS and customs declarations. So which country is more in favour for free trade? The one that left the um, largest and most powerful single uh, trading bloc um, in order to end free trade with them. Uh, is the UK in favour of free, uh, free trade more widely or is it the EU? I think it's fairly obvious which one is, if that made sense at all. And all because it refuses to accept countries' right to self-determination. I mean, historically, it's the UK that have rejected countries' rights to self-determination. But once again, he's wrong. 
the hypocrisy, the can't, the double standards would beg a belief that we had not all grown used to them over the years. Frost and Boris Johnson must stand firm again. There's a lot of projection in this article blaming the EU for things that the UK had done or the UK is like, not to mention the fact that it does mention down here. Uh, here it is. All Eurosceptics should back this deal as it is as good as it gets. And now he's saying that the deal is too good to be true. So, you know, this guy makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But yeah, anyways, I've rambled on for a long time. And if I keep talking about this idiot, my hair is going to fall out. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.